Hello, hi everyone, and welcome to Skincare with Hiram. If you don't know who I am, my name is Hiram, and I'm passionate about teaching you how to perfect your skincare routine. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week. Well, 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 what do we have here? Yes. Someone has decided to join the party that is my skin, this little guy right here. I've been trying to think of what to name him and I think I'll settle on Alberto. What the fuck, Alberto? This pimple popped up yesterday and when I tell you, it got juicy. It was bad. And I figured why not make a video exploiting this situation? <laughs> I mean, hey, if I'm gonna get a super red pimple on my face, I may as well make a video about it. So here we are. From time to time, I do struggle with pimples on my face. And here's the thing when it comes to my personal experience with pimples. I feel very, very, very blessed to not have to struggle with acne that has really never been a huge concern of mine, although I did have some when I was a teenager. And I thank the Lord every day. Did I just cross myself wrong? Is it is it the other way? Whatever, I'm not Catholic. But I do struggle with the occasional pimple. And no, it's not your little mini, hardly noticeable, cover it up with some makeup type of pimple. No, I get the big, bad, red as fuck ones that usually in the past stay on my face for about two weeks. I swear to God, astronauts in outer space can see how red my pimples are. And the worst thing is that I can't cover them up. Like a little bit of concealer or foundation does not do the trick. And I learned that in middle school by waking up super early every morning, sneaking into my mom's bathroom, getting her concealer stick, putting a tiny bit on my pimple, thinking it covered it up, when in reality, it just accentuated the crustiness. I know the terms I'm using are maybe not the most appealing, but hey, we've all struggled with it, okay? I mean, clearly you see it, it's on display. And I figured this would be a good time to kind of lead you guys through my process of getting rid of a pimple. Now it used to be my pimples would not go anywhere for approximately 10 to 14 business days. They were here to stay and nothing would work. But over time, I've had experiences where within 24 hours, the pimple is gone. That's it. And I'm very happy with myself for finding the system because damn, it took a long time. And I thought I would show my process just in case it's able to help any of you guys out there who also struggle with pimples similarly to mine. Now, when it comes to acne and breakouts, no one thing will work for everyone. <laughs> <sighs> that was weak. Pimples are one of those things that's just, I mean, you really have to figure out what works for your skin through experimentation. But these products and this process that I've gone through has really narrowed down like what specifically works for me. And hopefully these types of treatments, these types of products at least will point you in the right direction for also getting rid of your pimples as fast as possible. So let's get into it. Now, as I get into all of this, I wanna say it's important to be realistic about how you're getting rid of your pimples. What annoys me more than anything is products that say this will get rid of your pimple overnight. Here's a routine that gets rid of this breakout overnight. I get a little annoyed when they advertise that because it kind of comes across that no matter what, no matter who you are, no matter what skin type you have, no matter what you struggle with, it will go away in like 12 hours. That is not accurate, nor is it good to expect that because realistically the skin, it's gonna take a little bit longer than that to get rid of a pimple. I mean, you're talking about a whole ass lesion on your face, a wound. It's gonna take time to get rid of and there's no shame in that. There's absolutely no shame in that and you don't need to feel like you're doing something wrong because your products, your routine, are not getting rid of a pimple overnight. I figured out the system that yes, sometimes gets rid of my pimple in a day. Woo woo, I'm happy about that, but not always. Sometimes it takes longer. Sometimes it takes three days. Sometimes it takes five days. It really just depends and it's not always consistent, but I do believe that through experimentation, you can find a product that works to get rid of a pimple in under three days. And also I wanna say a pimple is different than acne. A pimple is usually an isolated instant where you have a clogged pore, it gets inflamed, blows up, bursts. While acne is a more severe issue that could be due to a plethora of problems, whether you're not doing an accurate skincare routine, you're not exfoliating, you're not using the right treatment ingredients, or it could be linked to your health or other things. And if you want to learn more about that, go watch my teen acne series. I'll have it linked in the description box below. I have recommendations for that, but also, you know, the expectations for a pimple are definitely different than expectations for acne. Acne is not something that will go away in a week. So when you're analyzing your skin, make sure you determine whether it's a pimple or whether it's acne. Now here's my process. First, I like to go in with a cleanser, but cleanse just enough. It's important that I'm not over overly cleansing my skin, even though it's tempting because it feels like my pore is dirty and I wanna get all that shit out. Over cleansing can over strip that area, which means that the skin will overproduce sebum and oil, which could create the exact problem that you were looking to avoid. Further clogging your pores and just over cleansing an area is really just not good for the skin because your skin needs moisture for that area to properly heal. So typically, personally, I like to go in with just a basic, simple cleanser. So the used to the people kale and green tea cleanser is usually my go-to because it works really well to just clean out my pores without over stripping my skin. Or I also love the La Roche-Posay Purifying Cleanser. Both of these cleansers are non-treatment cleansers. So they're just gonna do what they're supposed to do. But sometimes I also decide to use a treatment cleanser, which is something like the Inculus Salicylic Acid Cleanser, which is formulated with the ingredients salicylic acid, which goes deep into the pores and exfoliates the skin and gets all the dirt out. Hi, I'm currently editing and my audio went out for a bit. So 
Here I be. What I was saying in the video is that you can use alternative form of treatment-based cleansers. I know that I always usually talk about salicylic acid-based cleansers because I'm a big fan of salicylic acid, but you can choose other forms of alternative exfoliation in a cleanser form in order to help get rid of the dead skin cells. And also if you are going to follow up with the treatment-based product afterwards, like a serum or a toner. For example, the Gentle Papaya Naked Enzyme Cleanser from Kinship is awesome because it utilizes papaya extract, which is the gentle enzymatic form of exfoliation as opposed to harsher forms of exfoliation like AHAs that work really well for day-to-day -day exfoliation. And this is great if you are going to be using a treatment-based salicylic acid or benzoyl peroxide product afterwards, where you're wanting to add on some minimal treatment ingredients, but nothing too much to push your skin over the edge. Anyway, back to the show. Now, the reason I'm a little bit more particular about what I use is because if I'm going to just be using a basic simple cleanser, I really amp up my treatment products that I use afterwards. But if I go in with a salicylic acid exfoliating cleanser, I usually don't go as hard with the treatment products after. Now, there's a a few different methods and things I try to get rid of a big juicy pimple. Spot treatments are great, but honestly, when it comes to a spot treatment, everyone has their own favorite spot treatment and there is like no consistency. What I mean is that usually when I recommend spot treatments to other people, a lot of times it's not that effective, but they'll use a spot treatment that they absolutely love that does jack shit for my skin. So spot treatments are one of those things that are kind of hit or miss in my experience, but the one that works for me is the Clinique spot treatment. I use a tiny bit. It works well every time. The bottle literally lasts forever and it's great when I don't want to apply salicylic acid everywhere, but just to a very specific spot. But if I don't go in with the spot treatment, I'll usually go in with the Paula's Choice 2% BHA solution. Now this, I can confidently say, works for so many people's skin. And the reason why I do like this solution and kind of turn to it more than the spot treatment is because it's super lightweight. It's essentially like a toner, but it has the maximum percentage of salicylic acid you can get. The first time I used this product, it literally made my pores look smaller. I don't know how, I don't know why, it just did that shit. But I think this product is really great because it's multi-purpose. You can apply it to a small area or you can apply it all over depending on what you're struggling with in your skin. And if you do have pimples pop up more than just one spot, this may be a good product for you. Honestly, I would say it is a good product for you because literally everyone I know who uses this product absolutely loves it. So I highly recommend it. Oh, by the way, all the products I'm talking about in today's video are listed in the description box below. If you do want to support me, I would really appreciate you using those links as I do make a small commission, but no pressure. They're just there. Feel free to use them if you want or don't want to. Now, as much as I would say salicylic acid is the miracle, that's all you need. It's perfect. Even I have some issues with salicylic acid. Sometimes it doesn't always work. And thankfully I do have skin that responds well to salicylic acid, but there's a lot of people who watch my videos who have said that salicylic acid does jack shit for your skin. And that's actually pretty common. For some reason, it's just an ingredient that works for some people and doesn't work for others. That's just skincare. If you're someone who's tried salicylic acid and doesn't notice anything, here are some alternative treatments that I typically use when it's just not enough for my skin. First has a sulfur spot treatment, which is great. Sulfur is great for lifting out impurities out of the pores but works differently from standard exfoliating treatments and you may see some really good benefits from it. Of course, I always recommend a niacinamide serum. Niacinamide, while it's not necessarily like an acne clearer or a spot treatment, it is really an ingredient to use when you are struggling with a breakout or acne. The reason being that niacinamide reduces the amount of oil and sebum that your skin generates. And a lot of times, if you're like me, that's usually the reason why I do get a breakout in the first place. There's way too much oil in that area. And niacinamide is a great product for that, but niacinamide also reduces sensitivity and irritation, which will bring down the redness, which is clearly not working for me. <laughs> What the heck, Alberto? And it also brightens dark spots, which I think is a great way of ensuring that you don't get acne scarring. It's not foolproof. You can still get an acne scar, but using niacinamide for all those reasons that I just listed, as well as its ability to reduce dark spots, I think it's a great must-have ingredient to use. The only thing I recommend is be careful about mixing a niacinamide product and a salicylic acid product together. They're very tricky ingredients to work alongside each other unless a chemist has developed them together in a formula that's stabilized, which is why I typically recommend using a niacinamide treatment during the day and and then an exfoliating treatment at night. I also love the iUnique Tea Tree Relief Serum. This is one that really saved my skin when I was going through consistent breakouts. I didn't know why nothing was working. It has ingredients like niacinamide and tea tree extract, which is great for reducing that oiliness and making sure there's not bacteria buildup. And then another one that does work for me, but I would honestly only recommend to people who have really, really active, oily, sebum-y spots, the Mario Badescu spot treatment. And I know you guys are like, what? Hiram's recommending Mario Badescu? There are a few products by Mario Badescu that I like, and this is one of them. Yes, it does have ingredients that are potentially stripping, but when you're dealing with an overactive, really oily spot, you really need to get through all that oil and make sure you dry it out as much as you can. And that's why the Mario Badescu treatment does work because it'll help to dry out that area from all the excess oil. 
oiliness. But that is definitely not a product if you don't struggle with excess oiliness where your spot is because it'll only make it worse. It'll strip it, irritate and dry out your pimples even more and just cause a whole problem. Now typically after applying my treatment, I like to go in with a hydrocolloid patch. Now, first of all, what the hell is a hydrocolloid patch? They're essentially the pimple patches that you just place over top of the pimple to make sure it doesn't gather any bacteria, to make sure it collects all the excess oil and sebum, any pus that's in the pimple, I know. They work really well. And technically, here's a DIY trick. You don't need to buy expensive hydrocolloid patches. You can go to the drugstore in the medical section and they'll have big sheets of hydrocolloid patches that are intended for wounds. Which is funny enough, the whole reason hydrocolloid patches are even on the market. They help to protect wounds from infection. And one of the main reasons I love them is that they're moisture wicking, which means you aren't gonna lose water through that breakout in a process called transepidermal water loss, which is one of the main reasons pimples stick around because they can't hold on to any hydration and moisture. Technically, you can take those sheets and just cut them into circles and use them as pimple patches. I personally don't do that just because, I don't know, I'm a little bit lazy to like cut out every individual circle to use multiple times during the day. Like it's kind of a lot of work, but it is an option in case you can't afford standard hydrocolloid patches. Now, some of the ones I specifically love to use is either just one, a basic hydrocolloid circle patch, like the ones I've been using right now are the Panoxyl ones, which actually I should really apply to my pimple. I'll be back. There we go. Or if you want kind of a fun experience, the star face ones are also great because they're cute little yellow stars that look really adorable in case you do want to use it during the day. If you're really like an aesthetic kind of person, then you'll love those because they definitely are very cute additions to your face. I, on the other hand, am not aesthetic. Unless you count wearing blue shirts every day aesthetic, then huh, count me in. But to be honest, my favorite types of patches are the micro dart one. They essentially take all the beneficial ingredients like salicylic acid and niacinamide and arrange them into a ton of tiny little dots on the surface of the patch to be pressed into your skin. Now this isn't like 100% guaranteed to work, but it's a really good environment for those ingredients to be delivered into the skin without being exposed to things like additional bacteria and under that seal to make sure nothing is touching it. My personal favorite ones are the Peace Out Spots and the Zit Sticker Patches. Both of them are awesome and work great. Oh my gosh, I forgot to talk about moisturizer. Okay, now when it comes to a moisturizer, this is where I think a lot of people get it wrong when it comes to taking care and getting rid of their breakouts. A lot of people think for some reason that moisturizing is not a good idea when you're struggling with a breakout out because you don't want to block your pores. Here's the reality. There are so many different types of moisturizers out there and the majority of them won't clog your pores. The only types of moisturizers that really have a pretty guaranteed chance of blocking your pores are ones that are meant for severely dry skin. There are so many water creams, gel creams, lightweight, fast absorbing moisturizers that feel like nothing on the skin. And here's the reason why you want a moisturizer. Like I said before, when you have a breakout, it's a lesion in your skin. It is an opening, which means that the process of your skin naturally moisturizing yourself is gonna go out the window. There's no way for your skin to maintain its hydration and moisture in that area. And your skin needs hydration and moisture for it to be able to repair itself. And that's why it's so important to moisturize your skin when you are struggling with a breakout. Now, I'll be honest, for me, because I use more drying treatments like clays or salicylic acid on the specific spot, I do like to go in with more strong hydrating moisturizing products because I'm just looking to heal that area as much as possible. And I have never noticed, at least for my skin, a moisturizer that blocks my pores unless it has specific ingredients that are known for being pore clogging. I have seen so many cases where people are freaked out to use a moisturizer because they're concerned about breaking out when in reality, there's just there's so many good products and ingredients out there to utilize when you have a breakout that aren't going to do that to your skin. One of my favorites that I use when I'm struggling with breakouts is the Skin Fix Lipid Peptide Lotion. It has a lipid complex that focuses on addressing all different types of damage within the skin, but it's a great way of reinforcing your moisture barrier without a really thick, kind of risky moisturizer for your skin. It's a great product, but if you are nervous about using a moisturizer, I highly recommend any of the water creams that I usually recommend on my channel, whether it be the First ABU Coconut Water Cream, and that's coconut water, not coconut oil. Coconut oil is not good for your breakouts. There's the Revecting Clean Lotus Water Cream that I absolutely love. There's the Sum by Me AHA, BHA, PHA Miracle Cream. That one's great if you want a little bit of exfoliation as well. There's so many options out there, but just make sure you're moisturizing your skin. And then finally, I always follow up with a sunscreen. Sunscreen is an absolute must for me whenever I'm struggling with a breakout. And typically, I usually like to go in with a sunscreen that's zinc oxide based. The reason being, zinc oxide is great for reducing sensitivity within the skin, but it's also one of the most friendly sunscreen ingredients 
ingredients to pimples. I know a lot of people do struggle with a sensitivity to sunscreen filters, which is usually why I just recommend zinc oxide based sunscreens anyway. But some of my personal favorites are the Prurito Comfy Water Block SPF 50. It feels like literally water on the skin, absolutely nothing. Or if I want a little bit more moisturizing ability and a slight tint, I like the CeraVe Sheer Tint SPF 30. I know this seems like a lot of products, but typically I usually only use like three or four products. I just want to recommend as many as I can to you guys on the chance. At least some of them are going to work for your skin. But what I do and what you have to make sure you do is to not f up the entire experience of using products by handling your skin wrong. And what that means is don't touch your pimple. I know I seem like the biggest hypocrite saying that. I touch my skin so much it's not even funny, but when I'm struggling with a breakout or a pimple, I do not touch that area. That's the worst time, the absolute worst time to touch your pimple. And I think that's one of the reasons I also love hydrocolloid patches because it's kind of a barrier from you getting bacteria in that area. If you are someone who struggles with picking, I highly recommend using a patch because it'll just stop you from touching it. Another thing that I have to mention because don't you dare do this if you struggle with a breakout. Do not scrub that face. Don't even touch that shit. Don't even consider it. Stay the hell away. Scrubs are literally the worst thing you could tackle a breakout with because it's like, hmm, there's this wound on my face that's very, very sensitive and I have to be very careful with it. And let me just take this thing that absolutely demolishes, bulldozes the skin cells on your face at a rate that could make it even worse and put it on that area. Doesn't that make logical sense? <laughs> Oh God, I'm annoying. Just please don't do it for my sake. If you're considering using a scrub, just stop and think what would Hiram do? WWHD, bitch. And that's it. That's my entire process that usually makes my pimples go away within a day or two. I have no idea if that's gonna happen this time around. I hope it does, but we shall see. Like I say, it doesn't work every single time and it's unrealistic to expect that every pimple and every breakout will be the same and that you'll be able to get rid of it in no time every single time. But these products really do help me and I hope they can help some of you guys out there who may be struggling with the same thing. What are your thoughts on all these tips? I would love to know. Please let me know in the comment section down below and let me know if you have any further requests for videos about pimples and breakouts that I can do. I know I can do a lot more. I just, I get nervous around the topic because it is such an intense experience for so many people, but let me know. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel and to the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week and I'll see you guys in the next one. Mwah.